back to my channel. So this is going to be my March book and manga haul. And as always, we're going to start off with the March Fairy Loot box. I've already, again, I already looked through this. I already know what's in it, but ugh, there's a sneak peek. So March's theme is eternal. Here's what the front looks like. And here's the spoiler card. And this is so cool. So this is actually a tarot card pouch. So in every fairy loot box, we are given two tarot cards. Now we actually have something to put those in. Now, I don't believe in tarot or like use tarot, but the cards all have characters from like the books that they've had in the boxes. So it's really nice and handy to have those and like that way I can have like a visual image of what the characters look like. But I think that's really cool that we have a bag to put them all in now. And this was designed by at the Quirky Co Collective. And it's all embroidered, which is really nice. And here's the back. And it feels really nice too. Like this is very, very nice. Not only that, but right now I've been putting my tarot cards in like, I think it's supposed to be like a pencil case. So now I can actually have the appropriate thing to put it in. <laughs> Then we have this Wrath Metal bookmark. So this is from Kingdom of the Wicked, Wicked by Kauri Maniscalco. And it's designed by at Mono Lime Art. I have not read Kingdom of the Wicked, nor am I ever going to. So if you've watched my book hauls previously, you will know that when I hit a thousand subscribers, I will be doing a big giveaway of all of the fairy loot items I've decided not to keep. So this will be going into that future giveaway. Then we got the bear and the nightingale plate. This is really cool. So here's the plate, the little side dish, and it is microwave and dishwasher safe. Yes, I'm so happy about that. Like, that's one thing about the foiled uh, mugs that they get do. You can't put those in the dishwasher or the microwave. I like it when it, items are dishwasher and microwave safe, especially since my husband does the dishes and he doesn't he doesn't want to have to hand wash a whole bunch of mugs and, like, plates and things. Thank you, Fairy Loot, for making this dishwasher and microwave safe. And that was designed by at Blanca.design. And then we have, like, these stickers that are just like bookish themed they're not like for any particular book and these were designed by at no one designs and this will also be going into that future giveaway i like stickers and i think these are really really cute but i never use them so they just sit around collecting dust so someone else might actually get more use out of these than i would then here are our tarot cards we have the three of stars and the four of stars these are characters from One Dark Window. We have Elspeth and Raven or Robin. And these were designed by at Sarah Mirza underscore art. These are very pretty. Then here is the monthly bookmark. We have the art print with the note from the author on the back. We have the fairy scoop. And in April's uh, box, we can expect items inspired by Violet Made of Thorns, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, and our next collectible foil bookmarks. That's exciting. I actually, I read Violet Made of Thorns. I've read Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I read Daughter of Smoke and Bone a really long time ago, and I need to reread it so I can read the others in the book. And I also love bookmarks, so I think I'm going to love April's box. And the featured book is inspired by a Thorian legend and follows two rivals who are forced to work together on a deadly quest. It's full of dark secrets, love, and revenge. So that sounds really exciting. Then for the book. It's a nice little one. This is so tiny. Like, I kind of like these little tiny books, but at the same time, to get the matching one, you then have to get, like, the UK edition because then they, otherwise they won't be the same size. But this is Seven Faceless Saints by M.K. Lobb. So this is the cover. 
And then here are the sprayed edges, which are really, really cool. I like that, how it matches the front. And here is the hardcover. It's just red foiling all on it, which is really nice. Then here's one of the end pages and the other. And this is also signed. This book is a gripping murder mystery set in a dark fantasy world where a killer is being hunted, an evil, an evil power threatens to devour everything, and two characters are forced to confront their pasts. This sounds very good, and I look forward to reading this one. Oh, also, here's the top and the bottom. Now on to the rest of the haul. This one I think I ordered from Amazon because you'll if you watch my what I got for my 34th birthday, Paul, you will help see some of the manga and books again. Those I won't, you know, elaborate on. So if you're interested in some of those, you can go and watch that haul video. But I was, I went to two different Barnes and Nobles on two different days and they did not have this one in stock anywhere. So I ordered this with my Amazon order and this is Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell. And I heard like, this is for cottage core fans. I love cottage core. Claire's magic has always been wild, but it's never been dangerous. Then a simple touch causes poisonous flowers to bloom in her father's chest. I wonder if this is um inspired by, oh, what's her name? She's like the poisonous girl and she's in the Athena. It's like from a, a gothic short story. I forget her name. But anyway, the only way to heal him is to cast an extremely difficult spell that requires perfect control. And the only person willing to help is her former best friend, Xavier, who's grown from a sweet, shy child into a mysterious and distant young man. Xavier asks for a terrible price in return, knowing Clara will give anything to save her father. As she struggles to reconcile the new Xavier with the boy she once loved, she discovers their bargain is only one of the heavy secrets he's hiding. And as she hunts for the truth, she instead finds the root of a terrible darkness that's taken hold in the queendom, a darkness only Clara's magic is powerful enough to stop. So I'm guessing she's like a witch? Or a superhero? I don't know. Oh, well, it has content warnings. Absent parent, anxiety and depression, body horror, emesis? Don't know what that is. Fantasy, substance abuse, medical issues, non-consensual enchantment. That's a content warning? Okay. Oh, and look, the chapters have pretty flowers. Are they? Well, if it's on a different page, it's reversed. So that's really pretty. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. Then, if you didn't know, I love Poe. And I saw this, I guess, biography. It's called A Mystery of Mysteries, The Death and Life of Edgar Allan Poe by Mark Dawidziak. I don't think I said that right. It's a brilliant biography of Edgar Allan Poe that examines the renowned author's life through the prism of his mysterious death and its many possible causes. If you're interested in, like, the whole mystery behind how Edgar Allan Poe died, this might be a good one. I honestly don't know if it's good or not, but... I'm like buying anything that's about Poe or inspired by Poe. So I had to get this one. Plus it also has a really cool cover. I like how it's like a raven with Poe in the center. Like that's a really cool cover. I really like that. And then this book I've been wanting for a while. I also got it during my birthday trip. So I already talked about this, but it's Vampire Hearts and Other Dead Things by Margie Fuston. This is by the same person who wrote Cruel Illusions, which I've talked about in the past. Here's another one I picked up during my birthday shopping, which is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. This is a YA romance that I've heard nothing but good things about. Another one I picked up, uh, The Flock, the Foxglove King by Hannah Witten, and I believe this is about a girl who can raise the dead. And it has deckled edges, which I love. If you don't like deckled edges, you won't like this book, but I love deckled edges. Also, this one's really pretty, too. I like this. It's a very pretty book. And it has pretty end pages. This is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. Another from my birthday trip, uh, Grey Miss Fair by Francesca Zappia, who also wrote Eliza and Her Monsters, which I have read and really enjoyed. Okay, the, the last two here are also from my birthday haul. So, The Family Fortuna by Lindsay Eager. This is a circus-like setting about a family that lives in a circus. And this was 100% a cover buy, and I love anything about the circus. I don't know if I'm at the the synopsis didn't actually sound that intriguing, but the other two things convinced me to buy it. So hopefully at least it's a three star. Hopefully at least I enjoy it, you know? And then this one here I didn't realize I already had purchased the ebook of because the ebook has a different cover. 
But I guess I must really be interested in this because I ended up picking up like the special edition of it at Barnes & Noble, which is Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. And this sounds a lot like Ready Player One, except this was written before Every Player One and also before Sword Art Online. So this was written back in the early 90s, I believe. When was it? 1992. And this is the hardcover 30th anniversary edition of this book. So if you like either of those two things, give this one a try. I'm going to try to get my husband to read this at the same time as me and do like a kind of like reading vlog slash review of this book since I have the ebook and the physical copy. And I think this is something that he'd like too. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in because I've seen other people like reading books with their spouses and then talking about them and getting like the different, you know, like a female and a male perspective of the same book. I kind of like that idea. Then I got Yona of the Dawn 16, 17, and 18. So here's number 16, 17, 18. This is part of my Amazon order. And this is a historical fantasy romance that is published by Sojo Beat, which I love Sojo Beat so much. Then Spy Family came out, I believe, I believe this came out on my birthday, March 21st. I was going to buy this during my birthday shopping, but then the only copy they had, like the back, was ripped. And I'm like, I'm not paying for a ripped copy. So I ordered this one from Amazon. And Spy Family is basically about this spy named Lloyd who has to... He has this mission that has to do with like this important political person. And he has to form a family and then have that kid go and make friends with this important person so that he can get close to them to complete his mission. So he ends up adopting a little girl named Anya who ends up being a telepath and then marries this woman named Yor who is an assassin. And because Anya is a telepath she knows their secret identities but they don't know about each other's secret identities and they also don't know about Anya. And it's really really cute. They also end up getting like a, a family dog and it's just it's a very precious series. I haven't read the manga yet, but I've watched all of part one of season one and part of part two. Or no, I need to watch part two. And I was actually confused because I had watched season one and then my coworker Abby was like, oh yeah, you know, the dog shows up and did it. I'm like, what are you talking about? There's no dog in season one. And she goes, yeah, there is. And I'm like, huh? And then I was like, did season two come out already? And she's like, no. And I'm like, I'm so confused. So I went and looked and there's season one, part one and season one, part two. And I had only seen part one. So I need to go back and watch the other half of the season because I knew about the dog, but I didn't realize that there were more episodes that I hadn't seen yet. And then the rest of these are pretty much from my birthday shopping haul because Barnes and Noble had a huge sale that they, I think it lasted for like two weeks. And it was buy one manga, get one 50% off. Like I just went manga crazy. But I went and got volumes, I think it was one through six during my Barnes and Noble shopping. And then I got seven through nine on Amazon. And so this is Vampire Dormitory. I love vampires. Really all you need to know why I got this series. It's about Mito who like lives on the streets and doesn't have a family. And she like disguised herself as a boy. And then she ends up meeting this otaku vampire named Ruka, and he's only interested in 2D girls. He ends up saving Mito, and then he's like, hey, you can live in this dormitory with me as long as I can drink your blood. And I think it's going to be like a romance between them, and that just sounds really cute. So this is volume one. We got number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. And I am all cut up with the series now. I literally got the entire series that's out in one month. Oh, I also ordered this one from Amazon. Uh, Comey Can't Communicate Volume 13. I've been collecting this for quite a few months now and I still have a long way to go because I think there's like upper 20 volumes out right now. But this is about Comey who has extreme social anxiety. It's so bad that she literally can't talk to people. And she ends up making friends with this new guy in class and he can kind of understand her and see like that she's having issues. And so he like tries to help her make friends. It's just, it's such a sweet, cute series. And I haven't read the manga yet, but I have watched most of the anime and I really, really like it. Then I got, I'm the villainess, so I'm taming the final boss. And I got volumes one, two, and three. And I recently watched this anime. I absolutely loved it. It was so cute. It just filled my heart with so much joy. 
and I decided I wanted to get the manga. And there's also a light novel that is a lot longer because this is, I think, the first arc of the anime or probably like also the light novel series. But then there's also a second arc in the anime and I'm pretty sure like the a light novel has a lot more. So I'm thinking about maybe collecting the light novels because I did really like this series a lot. Then this series here I've been wanting for a while. I thought it just looked so pretty. Since they were on sale, I had to get them. So that is Golden Japanesque, A Splendid Yokohama Romance by Kaho Miyazaka. And this is done by the same person who made one of my favorite manga series, Kari First Love. Absolutely love that series. It is an older one. I don't know if Fizz is still making it or not. But if you can get your hands on it and you love Sojo, like Sojo manga set in high school, I highly suggest Kari First Love. This kind of has like a sim similar theme about like girls and like their looks and a guy like trying to help them, I guess, feel confident in themselves. So I got volume one, two, three, four, and five. Like the artwork for this is just gorgeous. And I also am up to date with everything that's out currently. Then they came out with another volume of Fruits, Basket, and Another. So this is volume four. And I believe this is actually like little short stories. So like volumes one through three of this isn't like an actual like full story. And then this is like little short stories that are centered in the Fruits Basket like universe. And then I got Beyond the Clouds, The Girl Who Fell from the Sky by Miki. So this is number one, two, three, four, and four. And I've heard that this is for fans of Castle in the Sky. I absolutely love Castle in the Sky. So that's all I needed to know. I was like, yes, give it to me. And I'm also up to date with everything that's out now for this too. So great. Just getting like everything that's out. And then the very last one is actually, I don't know if it's a manga or a graphic novel, but it was originally on, it's, it's a webtoon comic that has now been published. And it's called My Gently Raised Beast, and this is by, so it's art by Yio Suki, adapted by Tiva, an original story by Early Flowers. So there's a lot of people who work on this. It is in full color, and I believe it's about this princess who finds a cat, and I believe he's actually, like, a, a boy, and I think it's about, like, them falling in love or whatever. So if you're a fan of Kyo in Fruits Basket. Probably like this one here too. I haven't read this one yet, but it does look really, really cute. And I'll pretty much read anything with cats in it. That's the last item in this haul. That is everything for this haul. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you got all the way to the end, please leave me the cat emoji and let me know what books you have picked up recently and you're excited to get to. I hope you have a wonderful good day or night and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!